Hey, how's it going? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to add this alert box to your website using HTML and CSS. Now, you are able to add this in different colors. For example, I'm using a error color here, but if I was to go inside the HTML here, I'm just editing this on the other screen and I change this to a success CSS class, I will refresh and now we get the success color so you are able to add your own custom colors to this and it is very straightforward to do using html and css all right so going inside this tab right here let's begin from scratch to create what i just showed you and all of the source code is going to be linked down below if you would like to download it and follow along so going inside the text editor right here we're going to begin with this index.html file. I assume you've got an existing project already and you're trying to add this alert box to your website. So I've got a div with a class of container here and also I'm assuming you have something similar. If you don't, that's totally fine. Um, but uh, just know that if you were to include your alert box in the body, for example, then it's going to take up the entire width of the page as opposed to a container like this. Um, it, you know, it's most likely going to take up the center or whatever it might be. So going inside the CSS here, I've just got two styles on my container to say a margin of auto left and right to ensure it's going to be centered at all times and a max width of 1000 pixels. So if I was to actually go back inside the example here and just zoom out, you can see here that's basically the bounds of my web page. So Anyway, if I just put this back to the normal zoom and just head back inside this tab right here, let's move forward with the alert box. So, going inside the index HTML, you're gonna want to uh, you're gonna want to uh, place your alert box inside your container. So, we're gonna be uh, creating a new div here with a class of alerts to represent the alert box itself. And within this alert box, we need two things: the icon as well as the text itself. So we're just gonna go inside here, we're gonna say div with a class of alert dash icon and inside here, we're just gonna say a lowercase i for now. We're gonna be coming back to this shortly and actually making it an icon. Let's hop down below the icon and now just say div with a class of alert dash text and inside here you're gonna to wanna to place your text, for example, add your custom message um, here. Now, of course, you can either use uh, server-side rendering if you are going for a more traditional approach such as PHP or something like that, or you can use JavaScript to create one of these alert boxes and then inject your text within the class of alert-text. It is totally up to you as to how you get this alert box on your web page, okay? But most likely, you're gonna wanna do something like this in your front-end framework like Vue or React, then of course, um, go from there. So anyway, if I was to save this and go back in the browser here and refresh, we get this right here. Okay, so let's now stop from the HTML and just head inside this tab right here, which is of course Google's Material Symbols website. I'm going to be leaving this linked down below and it is going to give us the icon for um, the alert box, this top left information icon right there. So going back inside the website here, let's do a search for info. I'll hit this and now we can see we have the icon right here. And by the way, all of these icons are free to use and open source, that's good, right? So if I was to click on this info icon, we can see we have uh, options to include the font on our web page. So I'm just going to copy this top link, rel style sheets at the top here, then paste it inside the head of my HTML document, and now I can begin to use those icons. To reference this specific info icon, if I uh, hop all the way down here, I want to now copy this span, just like that, then go back in the HTML and just place this um, in between our alert icon div. Now, I did forget to include 
um, the second part here, this style tag with a material symbols outline. So I'll just go ahead and copy this part also and paste it inside the head of the document. Alternatively, you can put this inside your main CSS, which of course is what I'm going to do now. So I'll copy this rule set, go in the CSS here and just paste it at the top. And now I can uh, once again, uh, start using those Google material uh, symbols. Okay, not icons, symbols. Let's go back in the browser here and refresh and we get this right here. And the icon is now rendering on the screen. Okay, so we have the icon rendering and we have the text. How do we convert this into something a lot nicer like this here? Well, very straightforward. Let's go now inside the main.css file and add some styles. So starting off with the class of alert, we're going to be uh, assigning this a display of flex and an align items of center. These two properties are going to uh, not only place the text and icon side by side, but also center them vertically. If I refresh, bang, we get that right there. Okay, let's now go back inside the uh, CSS file here. Then say a padding of 1 em or 1 times the current font size. A box sizing of a border box alongside the padding is going to ensure it does not blow out outside the bounds of the container. And also a border dash radius here of five pixels and a width of 100%, okay? And now for the last property, we're gonna be setting a background color. Let's set this to be uh, triple E as the default. Let's now save this, go back in the browser here and refresh and we get this right here. So this looks a lot nicer compared to what we had earlier. We can now go back inside the CSS here and just target the alert dash icon and with the icon itself, with that container for the icon right there, we're going to be uh, setting this as a display of flex and an align items of center to once again, vertically center the icon itself, this span, this time as opposed to the text and the container, if that makes sense. So if I go back in the browser here and refresh, we can see now we have the icon centered alongside the text um, within the alert container, okay? Let's now go back inside the main CSS here and target the alert dash text. So for the text itself, we're gonna have a margin left of one EM. This matches the padding, which was set right above there, as well as a font size of 1.15 EM and a font weight of 500 and a font family here. I'm gonna be using the Lexend uh, font family and fall back to sans serif. Of course, these are all optional. It's up to you as to how you want your font to of course look like. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh and we get this right here, okay? Cool, so now we're gonna get to the point where we need to start adding some colors to the alert box. So I'm gonna be showing you three colors here, a warning yellow, a success green, and an error red. Now, the way we are going to manage these colors is we're going to be having uh, CSS variables defined within the alert container. And as we change the classes or add classes to the alert container, we're gonna be able to change those CSS variables, in effect, changing the color of the text and the background. So let me just show you what this means. It's gonna be a lot easier to explain that way. So within the alert class right here, let's define two CSS variables using dash dash, then say foreground dash color and set this to be triple two, that of course is a very dark gray, as well as a background dash color of triple E like we had earlier. So for those of you who aren't aware how this works, these are simply just defining two values in CSS. They don't actually do anything on the page just yet. To now utilize these variables, we can use them within actual CSS properties down below to say var as an example, then say dash dash background color to reference that variable. And we're also going to reference the foreground color to change the color of the icon 
and the text itself. So hopping down here, we can say alert dash icon as my class, then target the material symbols outlined uh, span in between our uh, alert icon right there. Then we're gonna say color is equal to var, then do dash dash foreground color. Because this material symbols outlined class is within the alert container, this variable is gonna be accessible within that one, okay? Now, I'm gonna put a comma here and also target the alert text. So for the alert text and the uh, icon itself, we're gonna set that foreground color. If I go back in the browser, refresh here, we don't see much difference, but if I was to inspect the text here, we can see the color is set to that foreground color. And if I was to inspect the icon, once again, the color is set to the foreground color. If I was to now go up inside the alert container right up there, and I change the foreground color to be something like F00, that's gonna be a red, we can see all of the icon and the text is going to change. So. By using CSS classes now, we're gonna be updating those variables on the fly. Let's refresh, go back to normal, go back inside the CSS here, and just define a new class called alert-warning. So for the warning color, we're going to copy the foreground and background color CSS variable declarations at the top here, and just change the foreground color to be black in that situation and have a background color of ECD103 for a warning style yellow. And now if I go back in the index HTML, I'm just going to add alert dash warning to that CSS class at the top here. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh and we get that color applied. And we can see that directly comes from those CSS class declarations. If I was to get rid of the uh, background color uh, variable, bang, it goes away. So that's how it's going to work. Now, of course, when you are rendering your uh, alert box, whether you use something like PHP on the server side or you use a framework like React or, or Vue, um, you would want to simply have conditions around these alert classes to say warning, success, error, and so on. Let's move on to the success class. So I'll say dash success. If I go back in the browser refresh, we go back to gray, so let's add the class for the success. I'll copy that and just say success here. At, uh, add the foreground color to be a white and a background of 46B63E. Save this back in the browser refresh and we get that. And lastly, we're gonna do the error, so dash error. And for this one, copy the success. We're gonna leave the foreground color to be white, but change the background to be CB00 and then 00. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and we get that right there. Okay, so that right there is all of the HTML and CSS required to uh, get your alert box working. Now, one last thing before I go, if you would like to remove your alert box using JavaScript, it is very straightforward. Um, if I go back in inside the HTML here, I'll just head down inside my script tags right down here, and I'm gonna say const alert box equal to document.query selector, and just selecting the alert box itself. I'm now gonna say, as an example, after one second, so I'll use set timeout here, I'll just say alert box dot remove, then say after 1000 milliseconds or one second, do that. So now after one second, it's gonna remove the alert box from the page. If I go back in the browser, refresh here, after one second, there it goes and it's gone. So that right there is how to, of course, remove the alert box if you would like to. Now. That is how to add an alert box to your websites using HTML, CSS, and a tiny bit of JavaScript. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.